Grade nine, art class. I always liked to draw and doodle. I had always wanted to get better, so art class seemed like it would be a blast. Oh, how wrong I was. Problem number one. Our teacher was not usually an art teacher. She was on loan from, of all places, the social studies department. <laughs> Suffice to say, I hadn't reckoned on being in an art history class. And if it wasn't that, you could tell she wanted to spend as little time possible to try to actually teach us technique. Uh, because she didn't know it herself. <laughs> Most of the time, it was just, here's some paper mache, go nuts. Or, here's some paint, paint something. <laughs> Problem number two. My school was fairly large, almost a thousand students by pretty close to. Lunch was split then into two periods so that they didn't need to try to keep track of a thousand students on break all at the same time. Not much of a problem as a student, generally, unless literally all of your friends have their lunch right when you are stuck in art class with the most boring art teacher the art world has ever seen. <laughs> problem C. I have always been a very fast worker. I tend to get things done quicker than most people. And so, generally speaking, especially because I suspect the other students were trying to kill as much time as possible, I'm not built that way. I would just get things done a week, two weeks, or more before everyone else. And so I would, I would talk to the teacher about it, and she'd go, well, maybe you're not actually finished. Just keep working on it. And so I'd try to work on it, and then it would end up ten times worse than it was before. And so at a certain point, I just stopped taking that advice. So what else is a bored 14-year-old to do when stuck in art hell while the rest of his friends are out having a grand old time? I'm so glad you asked. What he does is he asks to go to the bathroom and then disappears until right before the end of class. I know what you're thinking. Despite what literally every teenager ever would have you believe, teachers aren't stupid. And neither are we. So there's no way that your teacher never noticed these extreme conspicuous absences. You would be absolutely right. She definitely noticed, and she was definitely on to me. And so the day came that she confronted me about my long trips to the bathroom. Adam, it doesn't take that long <laughs> to go to the bathroom. And so I quickly responded, I, I have a stomach condition. Here's the thing about lies. The best ones are actually true. You see, I really do have a chronic digestive condition known as irritable bowel syndrome. And it does indeed, often, very suddenly, cause me to have to run to have unfortunately long, often uncomfortable trips to the bathroom. As such, once or twice, my bathroom lie wasn't a lie at all. I really did need to go, and I really was gone that long. <laughs> this condition had already been doctor diagnosed, meaning when the teacher called my mom to ask about my condition, my mom told her the truth. Her son did indeed have IBS. The teacher left me alone after that. <laughs> that tale from my grade nine art class is one of the only positive stories I can think of affiliated with my IBS. Most of the time, the stories are more about missing concerts or work shifts when I was working in retail, or important meetings now. It's been a constant problem for my family, with four of us all sharing one bathroom. <laughs> my mom and my brother, both to a lesser extent, are also similarly afflicted to myself. Upon taking a drive to Toronto with a colleague a couple of years ago where I 
described my condition to him. We've since taken to referring to my condition as the Dread Sovereign Ibis. <laughs> A harsh and cruel deity who frequently exerts his terrible wrath demanding I pay homage to him by spending time in worship to his almighty name while seated upon his smelly throne. <laughs> There is no cure for IBS. All you can do is try to manage the symptoms and avoid the triggers. Like certain specific foods, which are different for everyone. Thyme, the herb, is a trigger food for me. If I eat anything seasoned with thyme, I'm done for. <coughs> it's a good thing, then, that the small elderly Jamaican woman named Myrtle <laughs> who was the cook responsible for the mandatory meal plan at my university's residence, used time in every single dish. Come to think of it, that's the second happy memory associated with the Dread Sovereign, as it permitted me to get a doctor's note to be exempt from the meal plan and instead look after my own Cooking. I loved Myrtle as a person. Mm -hmm. She was lovely. <laughs> but as a cook? <laughs> eh. <laughs> Unlike time, though, other triggers are based on combinations of things. A slice of pizza might be totally harmless unless I had a bowl of cereal for breakfast that morning. <laughs> Spaghetti and meat sauce. No problem. Unless lunch was a ham sandwich. I take a probiotic pill every morning, and I try to eat reasonably well, as you can obviously see by my girlish figure. <laughs> but even if I get a handle on the diet side, there's another trigger for IBS. But you know, it, it's no biggie. It, it, it can't be as hard as avoiding all these trigger foods, right? What else do I need to avoid in order to not trigger my IBS? Let me see here. Oh, right. Avoid stress. I eat, I feel sick. That's just a fact of life for me now. Sometimes it's light nausea. Others it's abdominal pain. Others it's diarrhea and constipation somehow all at once. <laughs> pain and discomfort are unavoidable for me. And I think I could say that about more than just my IBS. But the Dread Sovereign has become an acute reminder of the simple fact. I can't cure it, avoid it, or really control it in any way. But I can control myself and how I respond to pain and discomfort. I can learn to live life around the pain, in spite of the pain, through the pain, even because of the pain. I've learned that maybe from time to time, just like in getting out of my grade nine art class, or out of eating Myrtle's super greasy food, <laughs> I can turn pain and discomfort into a positive, not just a negative. I didn't forget.